there's a big problem. If you think about the population increase, it's really scary. Look at New York. There's no affordable housing. It's a big, big problem. But thinking about this issue is that we now in this room, we are the leaders, we are the big ideas. I mean, but one problem we are facing is that we don't want to listen. There is a box. You feel like you are, you are so much qualified? Let's go back to the grassroots level. Let's go back to the community. Let's not make the things that might not work for them. Let's, let's start talking. Because the problem we are facing in this world is that there's two different worlds. The world of ideas that are not put into action. Mm -hmm. It's something in Kenya where the UN habitat build houses, the government, nobody lives in. <laughs> they didn't consult us. There's a culture that's going on in the communities. You know, so my advice is that let's all leave our box and talk to the people. In government, I would say in DC and Chicago, we tried to sort of break open the black box of the government agency and really um, open it to the public, put out plans that explain what we were doing, why we were doing it, involve the public in our plans, and then also report on our failures and our successes and interact with people in social media. You know, uh, gosh, five years ago we were doing that at uh, DDOT. Um, and you know, I was just in Durham last week uh, looking at all the, the businesses down there and sort of the energy and ecosystem down in Durham. I was in Detroit earlier this week. Two totally different places, but actually they have a lot of the same strategies. Detroit is just amazing. I was there uh, Monday and Tuesday. Steve Case was there trying to create some energy around entrepreneurial ventures. Um, the mayor is really partnering with the private sector to get things done. Mm -hmm. And these cities like Detroit, Las Vegas, that are going through transformations, even Tyson's Corner in, in, in Virginia, you see a lot of public-private partnership. You see people throwing the old paradigms out the window and just um, moving much faster, uh, piloting change. And I think that's absolutely key. And then showing the public, hey, this worked or it didn't work. But setting the expectation that we're going to try something, um, it may not work. And a lot of the great things that have happened, whether it was Zipcar or Google or the bike lane down Pennsylvania Avenue or bike share here, they're all experiments. And if you don't take any risk, there is no reward. And it's sort of cliche, but it's so true. And so I think the public likes to participate in that risk and likes to um, like if you set that expectation, they like to see the outcome and it becomes sort of fun for them. And even if you fail, that's okay. And I think that's something that governments are learning. Like five years ago when I would, or 10 years ago, when I talk about you know, bike lanes and uh, walking and, and sharing vehicles, you know, people would say, oh, that's some little niche thing you know, for like hipsters, you know, young people moving into the city. And now it's been a complete paradigm shift and that's really become the norm. You know, I, I think we have some incredible opportunities right now with technology. Uh, there's some people that are nervous about the autonomous, you know, technology, autonomous cars coming. I think it's a wonderful thing. I think that, you know, I talked about the 1.25 million people that died last year, many of them in third world countries. You know, I think we can actually get rid of that almost altogether. Um, and I think the implications for our streets and our public space and our cities and, and our suburbs um, is huge. The opportunity to, you know, take these lanes that were one, two, three, four for cars and give them to people walking, biking. I think we can implement slow lanes where people could rollerblade, walk, bike, do anything they want. There are new types of vehicles springing up that are bikes and cars. So I think it's the most exciting time since about 100 years ago uh, in transportation, public space, innovation. I think um, we'll all be safer and our health will, will be better as a result.